Right, this is how Mark looks in the morning. Actually, this is pretty good, but he's still flipping out. So let me help you, hon. Well, you know, I have my public that I have to get ready for. <laughs> uh, in case uh, people don't know that we've run into an amazing amount of people that recognize us. <laughs> and I take oh, my yeah. responsibility serious. At least 10. So why don't you give me a little bit of a tune-up, honey? You can do that. Is this uh, a good, a good, there we go. Oh yeah. Thank God we have solar. <laughs> it getting better or worse? Oh yeah, it's looking good. All right, it gets good. It's, it's the button is broken, so it's hard. To it's see. Thursday at the Tampa RV show. If you end up seeing me here today, <laughs> you'll know why I look this good. Oops, you're flipping out a little bit. Your hat will take care of All that. Right. and we are on our second day of the super show actually it's our third day because we did industry day it's been hot here i was whipped yesterday what did we do how many steps yesterday uh well actually we shouldn't have said anything because it really was only about 7800 <laughs> but they're, they're 7800 seems like a seems like double that well and you know what was the corker is that uh, we were humbled by how many people we saw oh. and how long we stood in hallways just talking about uh, RVs. Well, you know, and that was the cool thing. I think that's probably one of my favorite things of doing this channel now that we're kind of out and about. We met so many people yesterday that stopped and said hello, and it wasn't usually a hello. It was like a long time conversation. Right. But it's like we're running into people of like minds, same outlooks and stuff like that. And that's been awesome meeting people. So if we see you again, stop us, please. So Sue, would you say that uh, if we were giving out awards yesterday for the longest conversations of people yeah. we met, it would be with Cindy and Brian? Cindy and Brian. Come on in, man. What was Come it? On. Two hours. And now we're getting ready to go yeah. with our so, neighbors. <laughs> so we're here's heading up to the big show. Okay, we're so excited. This is this was Hi, what Paul. we were coming. Hi, Paul. Good morning. We were coming to, to <laughs> visit with these people, yeah. and you know we have to apologize to them on camera. We we told them we said, hey, you got to come to the Tampa RV show. You're going to have so much fun, and then we abandoned them. <laughs> <laughs> them. Well, you know they're big rock stars. So yeah, what right. Do you do? Right. You can't say anything about In it. our mind, the cheap seats. <laughs> we're we're going to have to tell you some stories on the way to the show and some of the things we had happen. So yeah. let's uh, figure out our game plan and we'll get going. Let's do it. Let's throw up the OGM drone and take a little tour of this Freightliner frame.
right, so we just took the uh, proverbial pit stop <laughs> and we decided that we're going to the Numar booth to numerize ourselves. <laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, we're stalking the RV geeks. We wanted to meet those guys <laughs> for over two and a half years. We're not sure if we're going to be successful. So it's a start though. Yeah. Okay, we thought if any place they'd be there. Well, actually, I blame Sue. She has red hair, and I think they can see her, and then they take <laughs> off. <laughs> so I think I'm going to throw up the OGM drone here in a second so people can get a flavor of what this place looks like. This is what we got going on here. I don't know. It is amazing how quiet this drone is. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a lazy YouTuber, I would just take the stock and I stick it in the doorway there. I, I, There'd be people sitting. <laughs> there, people would be sitting down and be going, "What the heck was that?" You know. And then Dude, somebody in the know would go, "Oh, that's the OGM drone." <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing there, Sue? Mm. I'm getting my blood sugar backed up. Yeah, but aren't you supposed to be eating with Paul and Pat in about a half an hour? Sometimes you gotta have your dessert for your meal. So are you gonna I'm come good. clean and tell them this when you get there, or are you gonna let them find out when they see the video? I have no shame. I'll share everything. Yeah, you'd never catch me doing that. Yeah, right. Really? What are you doing, Mark? Nothing. Well, okay, at least I can say I have a fruit. That's true. This is a fruit, right? Not a vegetable. That's a fruit. Yeah. Oh my so, God, you don't know what your banana... Sometimes it's chancy. It's a banana <laughs> covered in nuts and chocolate. Excellent. Mm. Let's go get some food for our dessert. What do you say? It's like a health food. <laughs> oh God. All right, let's go. Let's go to the little houses, honey, over here. I'm like a, a little kid. I should have got a cup. My cone broke. Ah. It's melting on my hand. Well, why don't you just hand it off to me? Huh. We're going to go over to the area where the park models are. And Sue and I have been amazed in the past on how beautiful some of them are on the inside and when you're used to living in 400 square feet you can certainly transition into living in one of these mm, perfect seating looks like a good spot for you there it is there's another journey So anybody that's been on our channel for a while knows that I'm the king of worrying about stuff. And it hasn't proven out that much that uh, we really have had reliable engine performance and everything. But uh, between crash worthiness and uh, fixing your engine on your RV, I've always thought that the people that have the Super C's do have an advantage. So uh, Sue and I are gonna play a little game. I'm gonna go in there and sit in it for the first time and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what it's like because I have to be honest with you, one of the things that we really like about the Class A driving experience is you're in a fishbowl of wonderful things. It's like being in your own IMAX theater as you're driving along. And it's even more impressive when you're out west and you have a more uh, cinematic type of uh, environment to be looking at but uh, let's look at the front steering here because that's the first thing I'm noticing and you wonder how much let's call it rougher the ride might be so right off the bat here I noticed that it has a leaf spring shackle here 
and you know these class c super c's they're more of a real mccoy type truck and uh, i guess that bears out the fact that when you look at the tow capacity on these they're almost always 20,000 pounds you can tow and a class a that's like our dutch star is advertised that it has a 10,000 pound towing capacity although you have to get educated on what that towing capacity really is because it has to be concluded, uh, excuse me, included in the gross vehicle weight that you can be sailing down the road with. So once you take all of your cargo and all of your fluids and all of these different weights into account, you start chipping away at that 10,000 pound capacity that you can pull. Uh, as comparison right now, I pull, uh, let's call it about a 4,700 pound Honda and uh, that along with uh, Sue and I's clothes and underwear and toothpaste and everything, which I think is in the neighborhood uh, of, it's crept up to about 1,900 pounds. So anybody that is brand new to RVing and you're gonna get a class A and you're thinking, oh, you know, I'm gonna really travel light. I'm here to tell you, we travel a lot lighter than most people when I look at what's in their bays versus, uh, versus what's in our bays. And uh, I would, uh, tell you to if you don't know what your weight is add or think about at least 1900 pounds is going to be your underwear and your toothpaste um, so let's uh let's go take a look at what it's like to sit in this thing look at how great it would be to be able to get into this right here the only problem is with my flexibility i might open the door and then it would be kind of embarrassing Sue'd have to come around and help <laughs> and me out push you up <laughs> yeah. In engineering, you don't get anything for free. And I've always seen the back of these and I never noticed something until now. On a Class A motorhome, your drive axle is a set of four tires that go all the way across. And your tag is two that go away, all the way across. And on some of the more fancier ones, you'll have a passive steering system that has a linkage that lends itself to turn when you are in fact turning. Well, the reason these have such super capacity for pulling and towing i just noticed that that's a set of dual wheels so there's four wheels across that axis and there's four wheels across this one so you have dual set of wow. dual's that's the first time i've noticed that wow that does make sense why they can pull and haul so much wow all right I'm gonna go in the cab, and even though I wouldn't drive with my reading glasses, I'm gonna put my reading glasses on so I don't sit in somebody's lap by mistake. So I'd like to have my glasses off to show the sincerity I uh, am trying to project while I'm talking about this frame, but it's so sunny out, I have to put these on. Uh, Sue, first I want you to see, look at how giant this tire is. Come from this way. This is a 365. You can look at this. This I think is like almost 13 inches. That rim alone wow. for that tire is I believe 10, and a half or 10 and a quarter inches wide. The thing is giant. Wow. It's got a load rating, uh, I think a little bit over 10,000 pounds when fully inflated the maximum inflation. Wow. This is a Spartan frame. Once again, shows why these things ride so smooth like a Cadillac. Because when you're riding down the road, you're riding on the springiness of the tire, but then this, this A-frame is also utilizing the springiness of this Firestone airbag. This stripped down frame here shows you the dual air tanks that supply and support the air, not only for the air brake system, but for these uh, cushion springs here. These are the air caliper cylinders to be able to operate the brakes. You come back here, 
This is why you want to have the TSD logistics card in your arsenal <laughs> of uh, when you're buying fuel. Look at the size of these inlets. Now, this inlet here is for the fill that's going to be on this side of the coach. And this inlet here is for the fill that's going to be on the other side of the coach. But the real deal is to look at the size of this tank and to look at how long it is. Oh my God. Realizing that this holds 150 gallons on my model. For all I know, this might be a larger one. So at 150 gallons, if you can save uh, 43 cents a gallon by having a fuel card, that is, that is a dramatic saving. So make sure if you're driving a diesel pusher that you sign up for that program. We have a video for that. Uh, that explains uh, in its entirety how it works from soup to nuts. You know, I think this is going to be a video I'm in because I keep seeing myself in your mirror well, and your excellent. glasses. <laughs> this, this is Spartan Motors frame, which is different than a Freightliner, and they're uh, they're exactly the same, only different. <laughs> so only you can decide which one you want to be riding on. I can tell you from a mechanical engineering standpoint, when I look at the way the suspension is done between the drive axle and the tags, and I look at how different the machinery is, at this point, I wouldn't be able to tell you which has got the better mousetrap. I can tell you it's not a gimmick from this standpoint that they are very different frames. There's very different engineering philosophies. And if anybody knows uh, or has articles they could direct me to so that I would be more educated next time I'm talking about this I'd really appreciate it. Just send us a, uh, a note at our journey in miles at gmail.com One of the things I've always liked about the Spartan frame is and, and for all I know maybe Freightliner's doing it now but for the longest time they've made getting at these uh, filters here real easy and on my 2014 Freightliner, this thing here is in such a ridiculous spot. It's up above where one of my drive axles is, or excuse me, one of my drive lines. And they actually had to take out my drive shaft to be able to get at that. And then you're at the mercy of, you hope that the guy that puts your drive shaft back in remember to tighten the bolts. <laughs> oh God, jeez. <laughs> I think this is the big boy motor, isn't it? I think you're right. Yeah, I think this is the cornerstone yeah. chassis. Okay, ah. cornerstone chassis, which would be the top shelf. So this is a 605 motor. Wow. Uh, even even the machinery that picks up the power to send it down the shaft to drive your fan is a work of art. <laughs> this is the type of machinery you love at an as an engineer until it needs to be repaired. And then you wish it was five horsepower. Uh, It'd be a lot easier. And you're glad it's not a rear radiator. Yeah, uh, yeah. Big boy motor. So, uh, what do you think there, Sue? How do you like this one? I like this one. I like the wood tone from I mean, thing. you look absolutely tiny in that room. Walk in there once and... I know, this is the closet. Yeah. And it actually has like dresser drawer and storage here. Um, it's got the washer dryer back here. Yeah. It's really nice. Separate ones. Yeah. And that's all cedar. It is. It smells awesome. This is a 44F. Anthem, mm -hmm. so this is comparable to Dutch Star. I yeah. love the uh, lighting. Oh, on the, the lighting's fantastic. Yeah, yeah because that helps a lot. When you're selecting what you're going to wear, you're trying to it's see what the color is. You know? Yeah. And you know, there's no monkey business with cabinets and doors, and you got to stick your hand in to get around. They're pretty uh, easy. Here it yeah. could be like with clothes to right. get in it, but this is nice too. You know, and I have to be honest with you. When I look at this carpeting down here. Uh, and I see these bolts so that it's obvious that you can take those bolts out to get that cover off to get at the engine. 
you would really be able to get at that engine and work on it. And to just accept the fact that your engine needs to be worked on, that's pretty smart. That yeah. is a great looking shower. This is a big shower, but check this out. Heats floor for bare feet. So your wow. aqua hot yep. takes care of the floor. Right. A dual shower head, really big. We could both get in there. Sue and I's personal favorite here. The double sink. The double yeah. sinks. Yeah, that's on the, nice. Well, this is, uh, wow, so this is like three of them. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a lot of space. Why don't you walk through and what about the bedroom? We got any comments on that? First of all, in this particular model, and it's just kind of a, uh, by chance, but we do like this light wood in here. Yeah. Uh, the, well, even though the exit is kind of small, at least it's low where you can get into it. You're not high where you're climbing up yes. out of it. Yeah, this is similar to ours with the bed. Yeah. Cabinets up there, somewhere for like CPAP machine and mm -hmm. nice drawers. You know, this doesn't have closet space like hanging your shirts in here. This is all drawers in here. Yeah, but you know what? This closet that we were showing before, I'm going to swivel quick. This is pretty big and pretty usable front to back. And I'm thinking. You know, if the average husband is nice to his wife, you ought to at least be able to get six or seven inches of closet space from them. Uh, they you know? are dirty and miles. Dirty and miles. And miles does go on the road. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks I love for you recognizing us. Oh, what, is it okay if you're on film now, or do we have to? Okay. We have to pay you the usual fifty dollars each. You <laughs> know, a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> we can I can afford that. that. Yeah. 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 I was hoping I'd run into some people. Okay, we're, we're stopping back here at the uh, CoachNet uh, booth. Yesterday we stopped here and we talked to Haley and she was so good with her answers that when we were having breakfast this morning, we're actually thinking about her. Now, I didn't know <laughs> that I was thinking about Haley by name, but I was thinking about her and Sue said, you know, we should really stop back there because you had a lot of uh, good answers. I had a lot of things screwed up. I've always had CoachNet from day one, but I was telling people that the reason you want CoachNet is obviously you guys send the biggest, baddest trucks because you kind of get it more than most people. And uh, I wanted to be in that club. I wanted to make sure the right equipment was sent. But uh, the caveat of you needing roadside service versus needing service because of an accident, I erroneously always thought that CoachNet was the only one that stepped up to that accident scenario when in fact I found out that that's wrong and you explained it to me uh, with the insurance being involved and there's some hierarchy you know the police show up at your accident and then the police's first priority is to get your equipment off the road they don't want to be monkeying around with the customer going oh you know I have a good Sam's or something they just get everything off so then after the equipment is removed then it gets towed somewhere else so uh, could you help clarify you know, what I just set up here, what I had wrong? When you end up having to pay for the tow bill, you have the option of going to your insurance company and saying, hey, will you guys reimburse this? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's either not your benefits or you're not going to reimburse it for whatever reason possible. Mm -hmm. CoachNet does have a benefit where um, if we do have an insurance denial letter that says, you know, we're not going to pay this, we do reimburse up to $500. So you do have a backup plan. Right. Unfortunately, we just can't take a super decision of the police. Right. So, so uh, as, the, as my backup plan, when I... Uh, checked again with progressive it was kind of ridiculously cheap to add the rider for my motorhome you know i don't want to say exactly what it was it was like 20 between 20 and 30 dollars for this giant forty-five thousand pound motorhome and then it was nominally maybe about ten dollars to hand added for my honda so i certainly did that but the other advantage of your uh towing insurance company is, is you don't play the game of you're 100 feet off the road you know, you may or may not have somebody be able to come out to your campground to be able to pull you out. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many YouTube channels we saw where somebody's being pulled out by other campers with other 4 by 4s and you're wondering, like, how come the tow companies aren't showing up? So uh, your company does that. And also, when you uh, drive the coach from a breakdown to a facility, 
you don't play the game that you'll only float, you know, go 20 miles or something, right? Yeah, exactly. So where are you going to most likely experience a breakdown in a campground, in your driveway? Like, you're going down the road, you blow a tire, that does happen, but you're more than likely going to wake up and your slides are not going to go in, your awning is not going to retract, or you wake up and you have a flat tire. So that's where CoachNet comes in, and we still send mobiles, we'll send tow trucks, we'll send winch trucks out directly onto you on site. Mm -hmm. um, as long as we can, ex we, as long as we can access you, we're yeah. going to get to you. So yeah. we don't have that. Oh well, you're in a national park and it's 100 feet off. I made it. It's always going to be off. Hmm. Let me look at my list of reasons why I won't come and, and uh, deliver on your service. So, yeah. Pick one. All right, Haley, thanks a lot for You know, what, a few one things. thing that I found interesting, what is the most off the beaten road that CoachNet has gone? Didn't you guys say yeah. you went? We um, we do a lot of things that other companies don't really do. We do the top of the world highway. Um, we assist in Burning Man a lot of times. Like, we do we do that too. That's another thing. Like, we have a we partner with. Um, Outdoorsy, who does rentals, and um, that's okay. a big go-to for people is yeah. having us for a backup in that situation. Because where other companies will say, "Oh no, we won't help," we definitely do. Yeah, but Burning Ramp Man is a really calm atmosphere. There's <laughs> yeah, no yeah, there's nothing. Happening. Like it's maybe boring. one guy needs to be jump started, you know? Yeah, of course, that's his heart, not his RV. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Just to ensure, are you just have this for RVs or can it be for any other kind of vehicle? For not only your RV, but also any vehicles you ride, drive, or Navarro, including additional trailers and motorcycles. So um, that does umbrella like it, like it all inclusive, and you can use the service as many times as you need. So you know, if you get a tow for your car, you know, you call for technical assistance. You use the service four times in one week. You're not going to get canceled. It truly is unlimited. You mentioned top of the world highway. Are you talking the one between uh, Alaska and Alaska? Okay. Yeah, because the, wow. you break down right in the middle. You're going through Las Vegas, you break down the desert. Like you're like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> so <laughs> what? What is the uh, CoachNet yearly rate right now? Um, for a motorized package, mm -hmm. um, it's two forty nine uh, to sign up and one sixty nine renewal rate. So your rate does go down. Okay. And for our towable package, it's one seventy nine to sign up and then one forty nine every year after. Again, okay. CoachNet's not like, oh, sign up for sixty dollars and the next. It's like $200 renewal, you know, so your rate stays low. That, I think we got nice. all our questions answered. When Sue and I are having breakfast tomorrow, if I'm still thinking about Haley, we'll stop at We'll be back. Either that or I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs>